spirit that it is always such a joy to welcome the Balash scholars into our pulpit. The Transylvanian Unitarianism that they bring to us is not Unitarianism as it once was. It is Unitarianism as it is now. And it is so important for us to see that and understand it as part of our story and our being. I want to offer you these words from the rector of the Transylvanian, of the Unitarian Seminary, the Reverend Dr. Elek Rezi, about Transylvanian Unitarianism. He says, we consider that the one purpose of real religion is not to prepare people for another life, but to inspire them to live this life as it ought to be lived. We consider that religion is a matter of deeds, not creeds. We believe that human beings are the noblest creation of God. God has blessed them with certain talents, virtues, and values. These are faith, which keeps us in relationship with God and which is the fundamental aspect of peace in our hearts. Reason, which is the ability to gather knowledge, to think, and to form opinions about God, ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Conscience, which is the spiritual talent which guides our actions and encourages us for good but restrains us from evil. Free will, which is that spiritual gift by which we can make choices in our life but which requires our responsibility. And love, which is the most precious of the values that we have. It works in us to three directions, love to God, love to human beings, and love to the world or universe. We think that the purpose of our life is this, with love of God and neighbors, with free will and unselfish duty, we must create happiness for all creatures on the earth. The Reverend Karo Iwash finished his theological studies in 2010 and has been serving as assistant minister in his home congregation in St. George in Transylvania and Romania while completing a master's degree in theology. Before committing to ministry, he studied economics. He says, I am particularly interested in social ethics, but also in how Unitarian Universalist churches are organized, how religion is reflected in your daily lives, and how you welcome newcomers and share your values with them. And so I invite you to welcome him to our pulpit today as I do. It is good to have you with us. <clears throat> God bless you. This is a traditional Unitarian greeting in Transylvania and I used this one for today. Today let me read from the Bible as we read from the Bible every week in the sermons in Transylvania, Unitarian sermons. I will read from Paul's letters to the Corinthians, the first letter. There are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And they are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom to the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually 
as he wills. Amen. I am so glad to be here today with you and I was glad when I arrived and came into the sanctuary and I saw people who I have met before, familiar faces, and I'm starting to feel like at home, although the church building is a lot different than <laughs> the church building in my home congregation. We dedicated our church in 2001, and it is a new modern style building, but there were many people who were saying, oh no, this doesn't look like a church. <laughs> so I, I wondered, no offense this morning, that what would they say if they would see this <laughs> church? We, my wife, Dundika, and my three-and-a-half-year-old son, Benz, and two years old, Veronica, arrived in the U.S. in August. And since then, there had been many opportunities for me to meet UUs, talk with them, and to try to learn from them, and also to teach them about Unitarians in Transylvania. And I <clears throat> had to preach in a foreign language, which was quite a challenge for me, because I had to share my thoughts and feeling, feelings in English. Sometimes it's hard to share it in Hungarian. <laughs> So in English, it's even harder. I think that every sermon has one basic requirement, the common ground. The common ground between the common language between the preacher and the listeners. So that's, they can realize together the realities they face, they can form a vision together about where they want to head, and they can have the willingness together to fulfill that vision. I hope that today we, together in the sanctuary, we will be able to find the common ground the common ground of language, the common ground of love, the will, common ground to, of the will, to make a, to take a step forward in forming a partnership between UUs and Unitarians in Transylvania. I feel today like I have a really hard job here on the pulpit because I want to speak about partner church relationships. I think that Unitarians in Transylvania and UUs from the US have several things in common, but one of these things that stands out is that they like to talk about spiritual experience instead of experiencing spirituality. <laughs> So it is hard to talk about partner church experience in order to fully understand it, we have to experience it and not to talk about it. As I was struggling with the question of what to say about partner church relationships for this congregation, in order to make it an experience, I found a good analogy, I believe. The partner church movement is like a deep river. Everybody has seen a river, so it should be easy for us to imagine it. 
The analogy is complete in the first place because a river has a very simple beginning. The Mississippi River, for instance, rises in the northern part of the United States, fed by perpetual snows. At its source, it's unpretentious, it's simple. It increases in momentum, in depth, in turbulence, and it makes its journey down the broad expanse of Americas until at last it empties itself into the Gulf of Mexico, which in a sense is the triumph of its own achievements. The start of the partner church relationships comes from a very basic need. To reach out in faith to other people with same visions, same dreams. And I'm not talking about reaching other, uh, reaching out only in historical sense or only in at institutional level, but I'm talking about reaching out, looking out on a personal level. How many of you know your neighbors? <laughs> Not everybody, but okay. How many of you know your neighbors neighbor. Yeah, less. How many of you know the people who are thinking the same or similar as you, have visions like you, have struggles like you, but they live in the next neighborhood? A few. Good. How many of you no Transylvanian Unitarians <laughs> who have the same visions as you do. A few. Three, I think. I, I can't. <clears throat> oh, four. I'm sorry. That's good. Or could be better. The partner church relationship is not institutional. It's not academical. It's personal. Churches, when establish a partner church relationship or keep this relationship alive, have a very personal goal, I think. To find the same vision, to find the power in other people who wants to act in justice and love as we act. It is the nature of the river to flow. It is always moving, always in process. Long ago, Heraclitus reminded us that no man bats twice in the same stream. There seems ever to be an infinite urgency that keeps the waters on business bent. They may be cocked here and there in swirling pools or temporarily stilled behind a sudden dam, but not for long. Once again, they take up their march to fulfill their destiny, to keep their thirst to the sea. The partner church movement, it is, sa it is the same. It has changed a lot since it took its starts in big steps in the 1990s. 
The first trip to Trans Transylvania was made by only a couple of folks who had such a great experience that they, when they came back, they started to urge other congregations, people, to form partnership with Unitarian churches in Transylvania. And many churches engaged in this partner church relationship, partnership relationships. I think that in the first years, this partnership looked like adopting a Transylvanian Unitarian church. But this, of course, the adoption was transformed. Today, I can feel that some of the churches who have partner church relationship have taken a step, two steps, three steps beyond adoption status. They form a real partnership. They can give to each other. They can give not only money, but they can give spiritual power too power to act in justice, power to act against companies who are destroying our environment. When I was a um, member of the youth group and Americans visited our church, I asked myself one basic question. Why do they come? And my answer was relatively simple. They want to know about their roots. They want to learn about their history. And they also have some surplus of money which they want to give us to our churches. But in time, I learned that this partnership, it's much more than history, sharing history, and giving money. This partner church relationship is very personal. It's about making friendships, developing relationships that can last for long, long periods, that can live even ocean, an ocean separates us. And this is true, not only from the American perspective. When Americans came in my congregation, I can saw, see how enlightened they are and how happy they are. And I could see that the people in my congregation are doing everything in their power to make the visitors, the guests, feel like at home. And I could see the gratitude in the faces of the visitors. And I could see that this is not history, this is present. Present. In the pres present, we experience something very big, which can, can be described in two words, partner, oh, three words, partner church relationship. But we cannot describe it truly. When Transylvanians come in the United States and experience wonderful things, learn about UUs, learn about congregations, learn about personal lives in the United States, they come back home and they are excited. We can't shut up them for a month. <laughs> They talk about their experience all the time. 
I wanted to have this experience. I was envious on them. And now here I am experiencing it like a guest of honor. Thank you for that. Let's get back to the image of the river. What does it have, the river? And where are we in connection to this river? It has a start. This relationship had a start. A start, maybe it was just one thought, maybe it was just one person, maybe two. We don't know exactly. But we feel that that start was possible because something which is greater than us helped to make it possible. There are two banks. Two banks who touch and form the river. One of the banks is on this continent. One of the banks is in this church. One of the banks is you. Even if you haven't heard about Transylvania yet, even if you just learned that Transylvania is a real place and we don't have <laughs> vampires, <laughs> you as bank of the river, you touched the river. And like this, you shaped the partner church relationships. And Transylvanians on the other side of the river, the banks, they are shaping this partner church relationship too. What kind of soil is beneath the river? The great unknown. What holds the river? How is the soil under the river? Are there rocks or is it smooth? We don't know. Sometimes it's, it comes to the surface and it's wonderful, it's miraculous, but what is beneath? I think, and I call it God, who holds this partnership, cherish, cherishes, kindles this partnership because he sees a meaning in embracing in this partnership. Where does the river flow? Does it have an end? Does it have a purpose? I think, I hope that the partnership church relationships will not have an end, but will <clears throat> find every week, every month, every year, a new beginning new beginning which can give personal experiences, can together build churches, fight for the environment, fight the poverty, fight injustice. I think the goal of partner church relationships is to do the, these things. And these things cannot be done without personal implication. So today, I'm asking you, you are standing on the bank of the river. Will you take a step forward and take action? Become involved in this partnership relationship or take a step backwards? What is your choice? 
Do you want to get involved in this? Do you want to be present? And it's not just about your money. It's like CEOs who want to get rid of one problem and they, okay, they ask, how much do you need? And they give it, okay, I just want to forget. No, implication is a big thing. The partner church relationship, and I emphasize this as a Transylvanian Unitarian who had benefited from American money, it is not about money. It is about love, friendship, partnership, engaging ourselves in this river, stake, have, uh, taking steps in this river, who, which is carrying many beautiful things for us and for our communities too. Amen.